Eliciting information is a technique to gather information using social engineering principles from a target. This technique is used with a variety of different methods. Some of the methods we've talked about already, like authority, intimidation, urgency, those can be used when eliciting information. Oftentimes, the attacker will try and elicit information by uh, talking about techniques, talking about different areas of a conversation that don't directly relate to what the attacker is trying to get to. So some of these techniques include false statements. The attacker might make a false statement saying that, you know, this is true. Uh, you know, the earth is clearly flat. And then the person on the other end would try and correct them in some manner to put forth their viewpoint, saying, you know, why the attacker is incorrect in their statement. So this could work if uh, you're dealing with an expert or you're dealing with somebody who knows a lot about their topic and wants to always prove that opportunity or show or demonstrate their knowledge. You purposely make false statements. It doesn't have to be as blatant as a, a large false statement like that. It could be something uh, smaller like saying like a RAID 10 uh, only provides parity. And then the other person would explain, oh, it, well, actually a RAID 10 provides uh, parity and striping and mirroring or something along those lines. I mean, that's a technique that you can use. You also have bracketing. Bracketing is a, a way to gain specific information using statements that are specifically crafted for that topic. So you, you're going to be, uh, you're thinking about these questions in advance, you're thinking about these statements, and you're especially crafting them to get information. So you, you're talking about, say you want to get some classified information about a specific crypto system. So you would maybe state what the advantages are or the disadvantages are of certain cryptographic systems and have the person correct you or explain things of that nature. Reflective questioning is asking almost like a rhetorical question, a question that's going to get the target to talk. So you're, you're basically encouraging a conversation, you're leading the person on, you're acting like you're very, you're very interested uh, in this kind of, you know, so, so say the person is talking about uh, routing and they're a routing nerd and they really like their different routing protocols and, you know, they're, they're an advocate for uh, a certain routing technique and you would ask a question like, well, why would anybody else pick any other routing technique. I, I don't understand. And the person might say, oh yeah, exactly. Those people don't know what they're doing. This is clearly the best technique out there. And so you're kind of edging them on by you know, providing those reflective questions. And active listening is just making it seem like you're very much engaged in the conversation, nodding your head, saying key words, feigning interest, uh, and encouraging the other person to talk. You're, you're acting like you're very much listening. You might open your eyes a little more, nod your head, lean forward a little bit. All of these different body language techniques can be used with active listening. Okay, pretexting and prepending. These are two terms you're going to see on the Security Plus exam. Pretexting is a creating a fictitious scenario to make something more believable. So you're creating a story. Okay, so you might. If you're claiming you're part of an IT team, you're creating a hoax, essentially, you know, because you're, you're masquerading as the uh, IT team. Um, but you can make a pretext of saying, okay, there's a company-wide uh, policy update on endpoints and we need to access your system to apply that update right away. So you, you might be pretexting is just creating a scenario. Now, I've touched on some other techniques in there. I've touched on urgency. We need to create this update right away. We're doing um, spoofing if you're trying to pretend or you're sending an email pretending to be the IT team. So there's all of these different social engineering techniques. You need to think about them working together. They're not going to be working in a vacuum. But pretexting is creating that fictitious scenario and prepending is primarily an email technique or a text technique where you would put uh, like an indicator before the text. So sometimes you might see important on a company email. And if a, a company uses this important line or this important in all caps on an email, 
then an attacker could pick up on that and use that to make their email seem more legitimate. So they might uh, claim that they're from senior leadership, like at the CEO position or the CFO and send a message off to a junior member to do some sort of act like transfer funds. They might say important or if you're uh, emailing from inside or outside the organization, some organizations differentiate that with internal or external in brackets. So prepending is adding this little section here, this external, this safe, that important to that email message or a text message. So, you know, if you normally see messages from Verizon Wireless or uh, T-Mobile, your mobile carrier will have uh, some sort of message or some sort of indicator in the text message saying it's from, that the message is coming from that source. Okay, so it might say Verizon Mobile Message, right, in all caps. An attacker can spoof that message and send you a text message with that same a uh, little blurb, Verizon mobile message, in all caps, to make you seem, make you think it's from Verizon, as another example. So it doesn't have to be with email.